Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to actually click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and I would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll put your link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating various applications of autocorrelation tests, or serial correlation tests, to be more precise, in eViews. From our previous tutorial, we have got an estimation of a multiple regression model that relates daily Tesla stock returns over a five-year period to daily S&P 500 returns and daily crude oil returns. And we have interpreted the statistical significance of the model and the statistical significance of the relationship between the Tesla stocks and the S&P 500 return, so the US stock market. However, is this regression model affected by autocorrelation issues? Because, as the gauss marker theorem states, if residuals are serially correlated, or they are not serially independent, past residuals affect values of current or future residuals, then the estimators, that is, the coefficients that we care about, are biased, so cannot be trusted. And therefore, we might want to explicitly test for autocorrelation issues with our model output. The first and the simplest, perhaps, uh, statistic that we can look at is the Durbin-Watson statistic that is reported towards the bottom right of our conventional multiple regression output in eViews. And here we see that the Durbin-Watson stat is 2.0045, uh, very close to 2, which would um, alleviate most of the uh, autocorrelation concerns, as first order autocorrelation is most likely absent. Notably, uh, the Durbin-Watson stat is distributed between 0 and 4, values cl close to 0 uh, highlight positive autocorrelation, values close to 4 highlight negative autocorrelation, and generally, if your Durbin-Watson stat is between 1.8 to 2.2 for large samples, you can safely presume that there is no autocorrelation of order 1. However, what about serial correlation of higher orders? What about the um, visualization of the residuals themselves? Maybe we can have a look at them and uh, have an idea of which sort of tests to apply additionally. Well, eViews allows for that quite uh, flexibly, so we can go to View and go to the actual fitted residual menu and visualize them as tables, graphs, or other sorts of plots. So first of all, for the table, we can see the uh, distribution or the record of the time series for the actual uh, dependent variable, which is the observed Tesla return, the fitted Tesla return, which is the one that is um, predicted by the regression model we have got at this particular day, and the residual, which is the difference between the two, which is the abnormal Tesla return at the day. And here we can see the residual plot for the uh, entirety of our sample. Uh, and we can see that the boundaries correspond to confidence intervals. So we can see the relationship between past residuals and current residuals, and we can also see the spread of those residuals to also suggest whether there are any heteroscedasticity issues. This is something we'll investigate in the future tutorials. Uh, also, what we can do is we can look at the graph that would uh, provide us with a, a more picturesque uh, implementation of uh, the same concept. Or we can also look at the standardized residual graph that reports z-scores, so normalized residual values across the sample. Uh, if we would like to save some of those um, outputs for future reference, we can click freeze, that would um, save it as a graph or as a table, if we were to look at a table. And if we try to close it, it will prompt us to either delete it uh, for good or name it and store it. So let's say that would be the standardized residual plot. And we can then further refer to it as a graph. If we would like to save a table, again, for example, the actual fitted residual table that was quite informative and quite beautiful, we could very simply freeze it, try to delete it, and that would allow us to name it. And let's name it as the residual table. Now we can refer to it at any point in time if we would like to uh, study it in further detail. 
So this is, um, again, a very common um, EVUs um, command set to uh, save either equations, tables, or graphs so that you don't lose them and you don't have to code them over and over again. But what about the rigorous tests for autocorrelation? What other tests can we use apart from the Durbin-Watson statistic or about just visually looking at the residual distributions? Well, we can go to view residual diagnostics and see a wide range of various autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity tests. For autocorrelation, we might be interested in the serial correlation LM test, which would allow us to test for serial correlation of any order we like. So clicking on that, the window prompts us to select the maximum number of lags that we can include. And here, again, it's uh, the, your theoretical consideration uh, which is at play the most. Obviously, you could use something like an information criterion to justify it, but given the fact that we've got a daily stock returns, let's say that we are interested in lags up to one month, so up to 21 trading days. And as we press OK, we'll be able to see the implementation of the auxiliary regression of, for the Bruce Godfrey serial correlation LM test. Again, LM stands for Lagrange multiplier. This is how this test was derived, but the implementation of the test is actually pretty simple. We have got an auxiliary regression, which means it's uh, another regression that helps us understand more about the original regression we had. And this regression uh, implements our residuals uh, from the OLS1 model that we have got uh, on our hands. So the residuals from that are regressed onto the constant, onto the original independent variables, which are as if we in oil, and most importantly, onto lagged residuals of the uh, maximum period we have identified before. So what we can see is that all of those coefficients are quite small, and if we look at the individual coefficient p-values, well, none of them are actually below 10%, which means that there is no autocorrelation uh, or no serial correlation of higher orders even that we have managed to detect. However, you might be concerned that these 21 residuals, well, it's 21 hypotheses that we have tested. Surely, at some point, we might encounter um, a significant result just by random chance that would not uh, be enough to throw out a perfectly reasonable model that succumbed to serial correlation to one particular lag due to random chance alone, isn't it? Well, for that, we have got the full test p-values, which basically are redundant variable um, p-values. They investigate whether the lags we included, trying to explain the current residual, the dependent variable in this auxiliary regression, whether they add explanatory power. And this can be um, executed using either an f-stat, well, the f-test for redundant variables, or we can uh, use the r-squared um, of this particular auxiliary regression and use a chi-squared test. Both of those tests return p-values of around 84%, which are much higher than any conventional significance threshold, which means that we uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis that there is no serial correlation, and we can be reasonably sure that this model is not affected by serial correlation issues. Another notable test that we can use under residual diagnostics is the Q-statistics test, which is the Lung Box Q test, basically. So we can look at that and include, again, any number of lags we want. So let's say 21 lags, just to be consistent with our prior LM test implementation. And for that, we'll be able to see the uh, autocorrelations and partial correlations, as well as the uh, corresponding uh, Lung Box Q stats. And we'll see that no matter what maximum lag length we select, the Q stat, again, this is a Lung Box Q that is chi-square distributed, and these values are plugged into a chi-square distribution to arrive at those p-values. Well, none of those p-values are actually um, below any uh, reasonable confidence threshold, so even the Lung Box Q test fails to reject the null of no serial correlation, which is good news for the robustness of our model. It means that it's not affected by serial correlation issues. And again, if you would like to save the Lumbox Q or the uh, Bruce Godfrey LM test results, you can simply freeze, uh, seek to delete it, and then name it as Lumbox Q, for example. And again, that allows us to uh, retrieve those results at will, anytime we want. 
And that's a, a quite comprehensive way of testing for autocorrelation and serial correlation using residuals from EV's estimated regression models. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'll make it to see any first suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you'd like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.